Right, this is the 2022 MLB entry draft. The O's have the eighth overall pick. Um, last year when we had the first overall pick, there was no like elite, obvious superstar talent. This year there are a couple. The first overall pick looks awesome. I'll show you that. Um, or the projected first overall pick. Um, the bonus demands of the players continue to be a bit unrealistic in this year's version of the game. Um, you know, they don't do the slot allotments exactly like MLB, but just, you know, that's fine. But the bonus demands are just, you know, of, if the bonus demands of several players in the same draft are more than a team, most teams slot allotments for the entire draft, I think that needs some tweaking. Um, but anyways, I won't go into that. I know I've complained about that before. But before I start, just a quick rundown of my last two drafts. Well, mainly the one two years ago. Um there's a draft history. 2021, I drafted a whole bunch of high schoolers early, so they're mainly all still in, like, low A ball. Their seasons haven't even started yet. Um, but Ace Lacey was the second overall pick. He's in Bowie this year, and I know I went over this in my last thing, but um, he's pitching fine. He's on pace put up 2.4 war, ERA and FIP in the um, below 4.5 on the good side of 4. Um, looking like he's going to develop. Um, Drew Bowser is first-round supplemental pick. He's still just 20, but he's in high A ball. And he's on pace to put up 3.2 war with a 138 runs created plus. Um, hopefully he can get that shortstop rating up. I don't know. But that's pretty – he's looking like he might be pretty good. Um, Fret has not done much. He's still in low A ball as a 20-year-old. Reese Albert is doing okay. Um, he's a center fielder. Um, he's put up 2.3 war. Uh, below average bat so far. But he's, he's 22 in A ball. We'll see what happens there. Ronan Cop is just 20, I think. Oh, he's only 19, actually. And I've got him in high A already. And he's doing okay. Um, and then, let's see, who else has been like a standout? Michkowski was a huge standout last year in A ball. He put up 3.3 war, 118 runs created plus. This year he struggled a bit um, in double A. We'll see what happens with him, but. Um, he was definitely a standout from the draft so far. Um, another guy that's looked really good is Yancey. Um, you know, for a 29th round pick, his movement and control, pretty questionable if he's going to be able to make it at the majors with those. Um, but if he can bump the potential and the current up a little bit on each one with that stuff and two really good pitches and a third fine one, he might be all right. He did pitch really well in low a last year as a 20 year old this year at the age of 21 he's on pace to put up 3.6 war he's got a fip uh below three and a half and era at four um striking out a ton of dudes that obviously won't continue at higher levels but um you know for a 29th round pick that's uh that's promising to be coming along like that um i think he was the main him and Michkowski were the kind of like um, main guys who stop, but I've really got a lot of guys here who have done decently, like Domes. Um, he's not doing well this year at a, double A, but last year, um, A ball is a 22 year old. Oh, he's hurt this year. He put up 3.9 war. So, you know, I think Vespi might be a guy who's doing okay. Oh, no, actually, he's been terrible, but he's got, he's looking, my scout thinks better of him. Um, and he was a 13th round pick. So yeah, just, you know, I've got a bunch of interesting guys and I'm not going to go into the 2021 just because so many of those guys are still um, lower down, um, but some promising guys there too. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We'll see who pans out. So anyways, let's go to the first year player draft, um, draft pool. Um, this is just batters, all players. Um, Jack Leiter is looking like the obvious first overall pick. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, he could be decent major league pitcher now, according to my scout. And OSA likes him even more than potential. I mean, wish he was available for my first overall pick last year. Or even this guy, Jaden Hill. Um, you know, he couldn't jump in now, but shoot, man. Look at that. That's, uh, and again, another guy that my... OSA is even higher on than my scout. Um, in the mock draft, they project me to take this short shortstop Cody Schreer. Schreier. Um, he's wanting ten point five million dollar bonus. My slot allotment's like six point five. I budgeted like eleven or twelve million. Um, so he's a high school. Um, he's. I don't know why this says college down here in twenty nineteen and then high school. That's an error. Um, 
So he's a high graduate, high school senior, um, shortstop, looking like his back could be okay, according to my scout. Really good fielding um, ratings there on the defense, defensive ratings. OSA thinks even higher of him than my scout. Um, yeah, that might be a guy I'd consider, but probably not for 10.5 million. Um, so like I've done in the past, I will do um, the first five or 10 rounds, depending on how quick it goes. I'll, I'll look at all the picks up until my first pick and then kind of just do my picks from there. Uh, so yeah, let's get it going on. Um, I am sure the Texas is going to take Jack later. Or, you know, if they don't, their GM and scouts should be fired. Yeah, they did. Okay, Jack later. So, I mean, I w I'll be interested to see how quickly he comes up. He could basically probably. I mean, this guy could be, with that pit those pitches already that good. <laughs> I mean, he's he'd probably dominate at Double A. I bet. Um, so. Let's see, all right, San Francisco, I'd imagine might take that uh, Jaden, uh, what's his name, Jaden Hill guy. Um, that's who my scout thinks is. The mock draft thinks they're going to take a shortstop. Luke Lito. Um, let's see what they do, though. And they do take Lito. Okay. Um, looks like he'll be a really good fielder. Um, could be a decent bat. Uh OSA thinks higher of him than my guy in terms of potential. With current ability, they're all, you know, as with most high school guys you're going to draft, you know, the floor is just so low still in terms of where they're at now. Um, so, but that's not a bad pick other than he wants a $16 million bonus. Um, all right, so who's projected to go next? Projecting next is Kumar Rocker, who is a guy I scouted, definitely a good um, pitcher. I don't expect him to be there um, when I pick. What's... Uh, let's see what the Reds do here, though. Oh, wow. This is going exactly according to the mock draft. That doesn't always happen. Um, good pitcher. Good pitcher. Good pick. And he's a college guy. Um, if he can get that control up a little bit, he could be up in the majors within a year or two, I bet, at the age of 22 now. Um, Detroit. Uh, Jaden Hill. He was projected to go fourth, too. I was hoping Rocker or Hill might slide to me. Um, just because they're, you know, they're a few good college arms, and I think they're the second and third best in this draft. Um, but you know, such is life of dominating so much that I'm not picking in the top four this year. I'm picking eighth. All right, Kansas City. Oh, Marcelo Meyer, who I think wanted a huge, bon yeah, sixteen million dollar bonus demand. Um, so again, another guy who looks like he will legit be able to play shortstop and play it well at the major league level. Um, and again, it's just, you know, how far along does his bat come relative to his potential right now? We'll kind of make or break him. Um, all right, the Cubs. Wow, the Cubs picking six overall. I didn't realize they were that bad last year. Um, of course, this could, some of these, there are 34 picks in the first round because if you don't sign your first round pick, you get um, another first round pick the next year. So that, could always be what this is. I'm not sure. I didn't think they were that bad this year. All right, let's see who they go with. JT Jin. Um, so he's another one of these. Damn. Yeah, he was another one that I was hoping would slide. Um, and he wasn't rated as high as the other two in the overall and I think in the mock draft. But yeah, this guy looks like he could be really good. And he was one of the college arms I was hoping to slide to me. I think that might be it for the college guys. I was hoping they're going to slide to me. There might be one or two more. Um but yeah, where was Jin? Was projected to go seventh. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely a guy I was hoping to have slide to me. Um, I think without looking, I'll look if they slide to me. But Vasile and Perkins and Erickson, I think, are all pretty decent college arms. But I think they are kind of a notch below. I think Jin was the last one of that tier. Um, so let's see what uh, the Oakland A's do. Vasil, yeah, Vasil, whatever it is. Um, so again, yeah, you can see kind of a drop off here in terms of what my scout thinks about him compared to those other college arms. And he wants a region, reasonable bonus, only 5.53. Um, and another guy that my scout isn't quite as high on. Um, my scout's excellent at um, scouting amateurs, though, so I trust him over OSA, although I do look at the OSA. So let's see who my scout recommends. That shortstop Cody Schreier um, is out there. Um, you know, with his $10.5 million bonus demand. Let's see what my scout says. And he's going to recommend Schreier, um, who wants $10.5 million, and his signability is extremely hard. 
you know, again, my estimate, my slot allotments for this draft are like 6.5 million according to MLB. And I think, you know, and I budgeted, let's see, how much did I, and I can always go over budget. I mean, you know, this says I have 26 million to sign guys, but that would cut into my budget remaining for the season trade for guys at the deadline, et cetera. So I set aside out of my budget, I set aside 11 million with 6.5 million recommended draft slots amounts. Um, so, you know, I could, you know, I can definitely afford this dude. Um, and here's kind of, you know, I think he will definitely be a shortstop. Um, and he, he's a leader. He's got good work ethic. Those are really good things. I don't like that he's a ground ball hitter. Um, and, you know, like I said about all the other college bats, the, or high school bats, sorry, the floor is just so low. Um, and these guys do bust. Um, I would say a little higher. So... Um, I'm going to do what I, I've done before, kind of ask my scout, um, you know, what if we wanted a pitcher? Who would you recommend? Carl Hartman. Huh. So he's a he's a high school pitcher who wants an $11 million signing bonus. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know about this man. No, I'm not drafting this guy. His movement and control potentials are way too low to spend this high of a pick on. He's a fly ball pitcher. Don't like that. And if this changeup doesn't develop, he's a two-pitch pitcher. I mean, he'll be in the bullpen. Um, and OSA isn't really much higher on him than my guy. I'm not drafting that guy. <laughs> he's not even being considered. Uh, so David Erickson is listed as a reliever. He wants a $7 million... Um, it's a $7 million bonus um but you know he's got three good pitches already he could be a starting pitcher oh wow OSA is way high on him um and my scout you know he's 22 so how high is his ceiling you know at this point um say he fo if he fully developed all of these you know 60 50 45 got all those up and then three of these pitches developed even if just three of I mean if he had three pitches Two pitches at a 70 and one at a 65, which isn't going to happen. But, you know, we're just talking ceiling here. And you could, and potential, you know, this 45 here on control can always um, increase as he increases. But say he just reaches what my scout thinks his ceiling is now, he would be a good pitcher. Um, you know, wouldn't be elite movement stuff or control, but all would be uh, above average or just below near average. But then he, he could have maybe three pretty elite pitches. Um so I think he would be a pretty good pitcher. Um, one thing I don't know about um, when you when you have relievers on your MLB team and you switch them to starting pitcher, their stuff and stuff um, stuff movement, especially the stuff, I think their ratings drop a bit because you know guys are generally better as relievers than starters. Why most relievers are failed starters, even the best relievers. I don't think that's the case with draft picks. I think I think that this would be his, you know, kind of. Uh, I don't think he'd drop off a lot. Although position relief pitcher, that kind of concerns me. See, that's one thing I don't. I, I actually don't know about because I've never really looked at a reliever this high up before, so I've never considered it. Um, he has shown improvement since my scouts started scouting him back in the winter. His potential stuff has jumped up ten points. Um, movements remain the same. Controls remain the same. Overall has gone up from 45 to 55. Overall potential, that is. Um, so he's a dude I'm considering. Um, and sorry, if it, I don't know if this is interesting to watch or not. It might be super boring to watch and consider this. I don't, um, you know, with the other picks I picked so high, I kind of had my eye on a few guys. But here, um, you know, this guy definitely interests me. He only wants a $1.5 million bonus, Gavin Cash. Um, what doesn't interest me is he's a first base or DH. Um, he's not going to play anywhere else, um, according to my scout. His bat looks like it would be great. I mean, if shoot, <laughs> he's going to hit a lot of home runs, hit for a lot of power. Um, so where did they have like Erickson and Cash and Perkins going? Let's see. Oh, so Perkins, I'll look at him in a minute. Cash is projected to go there. Hartman's the guy I want to take. So that is okay. And then who the reliever who I was just thinking of whose name I now forget. Um, he's not even projected to go in the first round. 
Probably because he was a reliever, but he could start. I guess I'm just missing him. I'm not seeing him anywhere. So that kind of makes me pause on that guy, the reliever. I don't think I'm missing him. I'm just I'm searching by RP here. Or scanning for RP. Yeah, I don't I don't see him anywhere. Um anytime soon. So maybe he'd come back around later and I could get him in the second round. If not, not the end of the world. Um so Carl Hartman, but this is another college arm here. Um Jack Perkins. Uh leader personality I like that. He's not a fly ball pitcher. I like that. Um his control current for a twenty two year old is pretty low. Um, you know, the potential's higher. Um, but you know, at twenty two you know, he's three or four years ahead of development of the high school guys. Um, this, you know, this changeup is, his pitches are good enough where he's not going to be a bullpen guy, I don't think. Even if his changeup doesn't develop more, his worst pitch, you know, I think I think he's a starter. I don't know that he's an elite starter. Definitely not, unless he improves a lot. Um, Austin Becker was a guy I remember glancing at. Mm, no, don't like him. Um, as always, I always really like, um, short stops. So like, here's a high school guy. No, not doing that. Here's another high school short stop, Rob Gordon. Nope. Um, and I always like center fielders, of course. Um, this guy's interesting other than his $10.5 million demand, but pretty good ceiling there. And he can definitely play center field. That rating will come up. Um, but no, nah, I'm not gonna draft him and use that much money on him, um, even if I do have it. Um, so let's just see if Remex, I'm sure he'll be the center fielder recommended. Yeah, he is. Okay, um, starting pitchers. And then Carl Hartman. So Hartman, so this is Hartman. I'm considering. Um, but really, I think I like Perkins better, even if Perkins... The things I don't like about Perkins is his, his ceiling is a bit lower. Um, and his control, current control for being 22 should be better. That's concerning to me. Um, you know... Hartman, I just don't like for eleven million um, with that limited movement, and again the fly ball that changed up. So I'm not doing. I'm definitely not picking Hartman. Cash, I'm not picking. Erickson, I'm not picking. So Perkins, I'm still considering, and Schreier. Um, I do not like that he's a ground ball hitter. I do like that he's likely going to be an elite major league shortstop fielding wise if he develops that so even if his bat just you know becomes average might uh might be able to this is tough um you know becker i looked at i don't like i haven't looked at this guy yet i like that he's got four above average pitchers probably pitches probably his bonus man is only seven hundred thousand. Um, honestly, I'm I'm leading towards Jack Perkins, and I don't love the pick. There's no guy here that I love. Um, you know, those college there were those few college arms that would have been awesome to have, but they all went in the top six or seven. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing any really some college bats that are far along. So my scout thinks this guy. Who's somewhat intriguing, but not an eighth overall pick. And TJ Reeves are the two best. TJ Reeves is an interesting guy. Huh. Because he's already, you know, he's got he's already got that some current rating up there a bit. But I think I still like Perkins the best, even though I am going against my scout, which I don't always like to do because he is um, really good at scouting um, the amateur draft. But yeah, so I'm going to go with Perkins. Um, and again, the reasons why is uh, he's going to have three pitches that'll play, so he'll be a starter. Um, his bonus to man isn't obscene. He's not a fly ball pitcher. Um, he can get, you know, he can become, 
I think he could be uh, maybe an above average major league pitcher. You know, average stuff, average movement, a little above average control, and then three above average pitches, maybe, and he's a leader. Um, you know, I don't, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind him, but don't, don't love the pick. Um, so I'm just kind of <laughs> wavering back and forth here a bit again. Um, just making sure that I'm not, um, so anyways, yeah. Uh, you know, Erickson is the only one that I would consider with here, but. Um, given that they've got him classified as a reliever, that's my my hesitation with him. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take him. I'm gonna take Perkins. Um, let's compare them. Let's compare with uh, some of the other players. Perkins pitching potential. Oh, um, so stuff, so stuff 10 better for Erickson movement, even control 10 better for Perkins. So Perkins looks like a better control picker, pitcher, but, um, he's only got a 30 current control pitches. Um, and these are current, uh, better fastball, better curveball. Same on the changeup. Um, I think uh, Erickson does have better potential on his pitches. So I'm going to go with Perkins. Um, don't love any of these guys. But, you know, at eighth overall in the MLB draft, you're not going to get a slam dunk. Um, I think Perkins, you know, hopefully can, if he can get his control in order, uh, that's, that's going to be the main thing for him. So let's go ahead and draft him. Jack Perkins. Welcome on board, man. See who the next few guys take. See if they, um, I think you know, Schreier's going to go soon. And again, I just didn't like him with how low his floor is and his bonus demand. Um, wasn't willing to go there. Um, I'd rather a college arm with some more, you know. So let's see. Are they happy, Schreier? Oh, they took the center fielder. The Miami Cornhuskers, aka Marlins, took the center fielder Tyree Reed. And let's finish out the top ten here. The Phillies. Oh, Gavin Cash. Okay. I want to see where Schreier goes. Austin Becker was not a guy I was really looking at. Hartman, there he goes. Okay. So Erickson and Schreier are still out there. My scout thinks they're the two best players left. There goes Schreier to the Brewers um, at 13th overall. Um, and the Rockies take a catcher. High school catcher. Okay, I'm going to auto-draft until my next pick. Let's see if Erickson's still there. Probably not. He is still there. <laughs> wow. Um, so I could get him in round two. Um, all right. So let's see who my scout recommends here. Joe Mack, a high school catcher. Has almost the best hitter left. Fourth best player on the board, according to my scout. Um, so can he switch to play any infield? Yeah, he, well, he can't turn the double play, so no, he's not really going to play. He could be a corner outfielder with those ratings. Um, so you're basically getting a catcher, a first baseman, quarter outfielder. Very high work ethic, though. Um, very high leadership. Those are good things. Um, you know, again, high score, so... The ceiling's just, or the floor is just so low. Um, let's see if we say we want a pitcher scout. Kinden Lavelle, high school starting pitcher. Pretty decent ceiling. Looking like he might have three pitches. Don't like that he's a fly ball pitcher. Um, okay, not bad. Um, this guy, this is a high schooler, so. Not a huge ceiling, but he, I mean, he looks like he's well on his way to being a decent player if he can still develop a little bit more. Um, it's always I'm going to check out any shortstop that's near the top of the board. College, looks like he could be okay here as a shortstop maybe. Bat, ugh, not thrilled with that. Um, let's see if I ask for a shortstop. 
Again, shortstop and center field, yeah, it's that guy. I just try to stock up on the really important positions to have locked down, so it's good to have a lot of options uh, there. Christian Franklin, I don't love that. I honestly think I might go with David Erickson here, even though my scout isn't um, suggesting him here. And, and maybe he'll bomb as a starter, but... Um, oh, he's, oh, shit, I forgot he wanted $7 million. Jeez. <laughs> uh, that would put me way over budget already in the first two rounds. All right, I'm not willing to take that risk. Um, my scout want me to take again. Joe Mack. I don't love taking a catcher. Um, you know, I know you don't draft for need, um, but with Adley Rutschman up there and this guy, I don't know, he's going to be fine as a catcher, but I really focus on having great defensive catchers. Um, his competition level was average. He's extremely hard to sign, apparently. Um, this is the pitcher that my guy recommended. Don't love that because he's a fly baller. This is the other pitcher out there. Hmm. I don't like that guy one minute. Goes to... I mean, there's some solid college arms out there, but none of them that high of a ceiling. Um, I'm going to go with Joe Mack. My scouts recommended him. It's got a high ceiling. Um, mainly just trusting my scout here because there's not a, an obvious guy. Hmm. Um, so we'll go with Joe Mack. Erickson's still sitting out there. I guess someone wants to pay that $7 million bonus. Um, let's see. So my guy is recommending this reliever, Titus <laughs> Gronawig. Um, he's a lefty college guy. He's 22. What? Why would I want this guy? You gotta have something better for me than that. I mean, he's not even on my scout's board here, the top potential rating guys. Get out of here with that, man. Um, so all batters, who would you recommend? Mikey Perez, who's a shortstop. He was available last time. See, now you're getting into these rounds. I don't I don't mind these picks as much. Um, you know, personality class isn't great. Um, We'll see how good of a shortstop we can come. It'd definitely be a corner, um, second baseman, maybe a decent um, shortstop. He could play some outfield too. Um, his arm's a little weak, um, but I actually kind of like this pick here. Um, he only wants 180000 which is well below slot. Um, yeah, let me just see if, if I say I want a starting pitcher, who he says to Carter Raffield. Um Oh, he's kind of interesting. That movement, though. He's a fly ball pitcher, so I'm going to stay away. It's going to be the tiebreaker on this. Um, and I'm going to pick uh, Mikey Perez, the uh, college shortstop. I picked a lot. I picked a lot of uh, <laughs> college players early last year, so this is, you know, just evening it out. Um, all right. Oh, so somebody took my dude, uh, whatever his name was, that reliever who was out there, Erickson or whatever it was. Uh, so my scout is now recommending for my fourth round pick, Connor Simon, high school shortstop. Oh, he's an elite glove for sure. Low leadership, which is fine, whatever. He's not a jerk. He just doesn't take charge. Um, ground ball hitter, the bat, man. I don't know if that bat's good. Even with that glove, I don't know if that bat's going to play. Even if he, I mean, if he, if we're talking reaching a ceiling here, now he could always improve the eye a bit. But even if he reaches a ceiling, I'm not sure it's a major league bat. Which, again, in the fourth round, you're not going to necessarily get that. But Carter Raffield is still, still recommending this guy, another college guy. Um, Garrett Brown looks okay. Burbank looks okay. You know, nothing too overwhelming here. Just a bunch of guys that look okay. Um, let's see. Josh Hall, center. <laughs> Jeez. No, thank you. I mean, you know, at least he can make contact with the ball and have a decent eye. But um, 
to Carter Raffield. Yeah, I don't mind this pick. I don't like that he's a fly ball pitcher. I know I'm repeating myself. Um, so Connor Simon, I don't like that at all. Um, let's see, what's Ben Harris up to here? Nah. Josh Hall, center fielder. That was the guy I just looked at, sorry. Uh, check out this shortstop. No. Him. This guy's a reliever. He looks pretty good, but I'm not going to spend a pick on a reliever yet. Um, so here's our kind of his Simon. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll draft him. He's got an elite glove. Bat looks weak, but let's do it. All right. Hmm. Another high school shortstop he's recommending. Jonathan Vestine. Another guy who looks like he could be an elite glove. Um, but he's a ground ball hitter, and that bat is just gross. Just terrible. Um, what if I want a pitcher, sir? Carter Raff Raffield again. Really wants me to go in on this fly ball pitcher, Carter Raffield. Which, I mean, I have some fly ball pitchers. They're not the end of the world. Um, what if I want a center fielder? Josh Hall. College. That's the guy who was around last time. Um, so I'm going to draft this Carter Raffield guy. He's been recommend for, recommending him for a bit. Um, don't love him. That movement and the fly ball pitcher stuff don't look good. Don't look good. Other than that, he looks um, okay. Um, all right. Still recommend, recommending Vestine for me. I don't want him, dude. Any first baseman? Any slugger out there that you'd recommend? No. Uh, how about pitchers? Garrett Brown, who is a college pitcher. He's 6'7. Um, the best rated player left. All right, I'll go with Garrett Brown, the guy I recommended. All right, last pick, and then I'm going to come out. Still wants me to draft this guy, Jonathan Vestine. Dude, he's... I mean, I guess the fact that, like, power is a thing that's low is good, but his I and K and contact, not like they're, like, screaming goodness here. But, hey, man, we'll... Hey, always want a, uh, a good glove, I guess. So there we go. So I'll go through the rest of the draft. That's it. Um, that's all I'm going to do on here. Feel all right about it? Feel all right? Um, so, you know, Jack Perkins. We'll see how he does. Um, that control is going to be his biggest um, obstacle to getting to the majors. Um, but he's the eighth overall pick by the Orioles.